nothing to do with her, just how you feel about this. How, because a lot of times you get together, then you find out, wow, you're not even compatible. Right. <laughs> the way you think, the way she thinks, is all the way different. Because you didn't take that time, because you let lust come in. Uh -huh. And everybody, of course, everybody could, could, could agree with me because it could happen to any of us. If you're not strong and disciplined. It has happened. Yeah, it has happened, you know, right. You know, so, because that's the world we in. That's why you gotta make that change and that's why you gotta be, you know, obedient and be disciplined and know who you're dealing with. Because a lot of times you can make a mistake. You know, her brother say, oh, no, the most high day in this, that's, you know, they ain't together no more. Right. Most high don't make no mistakes. Right. Don't make no mistakes. Straight up, you know, you don't make no mistakes. But, you know, it's, it's, it's up to the man, you know, to determine what he's going to do and the woman also. You know, it's just not the man, it's the woman too. She got to look at, okay, because, you know, a lot of times, Brothers be put on that facade like they all this and they really love you this there this way and that way and then they, you get with them and they be mean spirit. Mm -hmm. You really get a chance to see them once you, especially when you live with someone, you come together and be be together. You get a chance to really see every day what their life patterns are and what how they are. And you let somebody be who they are, then you see, okay, well, you either gonna mold this person to be the way you want them to be, and women try to mold men to be the way they want. To be in this world, because it's say a woman show what? Compass a man. Compass a man. So, you know, it's about that man being a man, but not with evilness and, 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 and so cold blooded that the woman feel like she's in bondage right, right. just of being married, supposed to be with love and caring for each other. But, oh, Scripture say, who can find a virtuous woman? Question mark. Question mark, right? <laughs> but hey, who can, who can find a, a righteous man? Yeah. That's going to really be down and follow what it is that this word is saying, too. Guide you. Right I mean, you, know, you got to be able to be down. I mean, you got to be able to do what's right according to what the, how the most High says supposed to be. Because, uh, get a, hold on. Good chapter for y'all is uh, First Corinthians seventh chapter. Start at verse one. Does anyone have any other questions? That's it. Um, read that. First Corinthians chapter seven, verse one. Right. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Read that again. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote, ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. You say, it's good for a man not to touch a woman. Read. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. To avoid fornication, read. Let every man have his own wife. Let every man have his own wife, read. And let every woman have her own husband. Let every woman have her own husband, read. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. That's right, you know, do what's right. Matter of fact, before we go there, I wanted, I wanted to go to, uh, let's go to uh, our forefather, Jacob. I mean, you gotta, you gotta be there for each other. You gotta be there in love for each other. Go to uh, Genesis 29. Let's start over verse 50. This is our forefather. 29 and 15. 29 and 15. Genesis chapter 29, verse 15. You're still dealing with marriage. Let me show you that out. It was from the beginning. Now it was, I mean, it's read in, uh, in Second Ezra. This is how we done it, read. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 15. And the man said unto Jacob. This is uh, our foremother, Rebecca's brother, Laban, the Syrian. They were not Israelites, they were Syrians. Not Assyrian, but Syrians. S-Y-R-I-N-A-N-S. Go ahead. 
And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother, shouldest thou therefore serve me for not? Go ahead. Tell me, what shall thy wages be? Go ahead. And Laban said, like And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. So Laban, this Jacob's uncle, had two daughters, Leah and Rachel. Go ahead. Leah was tender-eyed. I mean, she didn't look all that good. Go ahead. But Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. And Rachel was very fine and beautiful. Go ahead. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. He said, I'm going to serve you. This is going to be my wage, y'all. I'm going to serve you seven years and give me Rachel, your youngest daughter, who was beautiful and well-favored. Go ahead. And the man said, it is better that I give her to thee, than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. Yeah, he says, better I give it to give her to you, Jacob, than to another man. He said, abide with me, work with me these seven years. Go ahead. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel. And they seemed unto him but few, but a few days. So we're talking about a year. Jacob worked seven years for his woman. A star of seven years, I'll say. <laughs> seven years waiting to marry Rachel, working, laboring, waiting to marry his wife. Go ahead. But a few days, but the love he had for her. For her. No, for the love he had. For the love he had to her. Right, he said it was just like a few days for the love that he had for Rachel. Listen at this closely. This is going to bring you home, Rage. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife. He said, I done served you seven years. Give me my wife. Go ahead. For my days are fulfilled. My days are fulfilled. I done gave you seven years, Reed. That I may go in unto her. That I may go in and have sex with her and make her my wife. That's what he said. I may go in her to make her, to consummate this marriage and let her be my wife. Go ahead. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. Here go that reception. What did he do? Made a feast. He made a feast. This is just, just like we had a reception. So he made a feast, read. And it came to pass in the evening. In where? In the evening. In the evening, read. That he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her and brought her to him and went into... You no, know, and he... Like it. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to him, and he went in unto her. Yeah, he brought Leah. It was evening. He made a feast, and he brought Leah, the oldest daughter, and brought her to him, and he went in unto her, right? And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zilpha, his maid for an handmaid. Right, so this is in the evening, this is at nighttime. He made a feast. He ain't, he, ain't going, he, ain't, he ain't going to a, amongst all the people. <laughs> they had what they call the wedding chamber. And Jacob's in this room, thinking that Rachel's coming in here to him. He's excited. He didn't, seven years he's been waiting on his woman. Go ahead. And it came to pass. And it pass, read. And in the morning. When? In the morning. In the morning. That's different from the evening, the nighttime, read. Behold, it was Leah. It was Leah. It wasn't Rachel. It was Leah, the firstborn of Laban, read. And he said to Laban, what is this thou hast done unto me? What has this you done done to me, man? Read. Did I not... Did not I serve with thee for Rachel? Did not serve with thee for Rachel, read. Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? Why have you fooled me, man? Go ahead. And Laban said, It must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Yeah, because he was serious. <laughs> he said, It ain't right to give the younger before the firstborn. Listen, go ahead. Fulfill her week. And we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. Seven other years. <laughs> Woo. Go ahead. And Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. And he gave him Rachel, his daughter, to wife also. That was 14 years. 
14 years for Rachel. Go ahead. Verse 29. And Laban gave to Rachel his daughter Bilhah, his handmaid, to be her ha to be her maid. Right, so Laban gave Zilpah to Leah, and he gave Bilhah to Rachel. So that's the four women that Jacob had that produced the tribes, the 12 tribes of Israel. Plus Joseph, when he went to Egypt, he had a wife and he produced uh, Ephraim and Manasseh. And Joe, and Manasseh was the oldest, but, the, but uh, Jacob chose Ephraim before Manasseh. Even became the head tribe of the ten tribes. But that's where we come from. We come from five women and two men. Jacob and Joseph. So in Leah, she had six six sons and a daughter. Mm -hmm. She had the most. <laughs> Just show you how the whole side work, right? Mm -hmm. Just like you said about Shaq Abishai here, he ain't look good. Mm -hmm. Leia didn't look good. Most I gave her the most. Yeah. <laughs> More children than him. And he killed, he killed Rachel, the one he loved. Right. She gonna take Levi's idols and right. hide them under, tell about she on a cycle. <laughs> when he came for his idols, tell about she on a cycle. On her cycle, excuse me. Most I killed her when she had measurement. Well, we gotta really be careful what we do. So are there any other questions? That answer your question? Okay, any other questions? Okay. Praise the Most High, His word. Yes. Um, go back to uh, 1 Corinthians 7 chapter. It's a good chapter that Paul brings out uh, certain things, you know, that he's, he, he asked for permission to uh, include here. And certain things are by the most high. We'll read this. First Corinthians one, first, 7 and 1. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Right. So let every man have his own wife and every woman her own husband. Go ahead. And let the avoid, to avoid fornication. Go ahead. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. Right. Go ahead. The wife hath not power of her own body. See, the wife hath not power of her own body, read. But the husband. But the husband, read. And likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. So, I'm not going to give you nothing tonight because you made me mad. Mm -hmm. well, I ain't going to touch you. Because you can't wait. <laughs> yeah, whatever reason that they use. Hear what it said? The wife have not power over her own body, but the husband. And likewise, also the husband have not power of his own body, but the wife. It's very important. Listen at this, read. Defraud ye not one the other. It's talking about laying with each other. Defraud ye not one the other. And remember it said, sexual intercourse is nourishes the marriage, the marriage. Even if you go before Esau's justice of the peace, you get married and you have to go on your honeymoon, you get to arguing and fighting and you never really touched her. 
The judge will say, hey, did y'all have sex in the course after they said I do? No, I ain't touch him. He, I wouldn't let him touch me, and I ain't touch her either. The man is disannulled. Straight up. That's even in Esau's system. You don't, you don't consummate that marriage with sexual intercourse, it's null and void. So go ahead, that's why I say, the wife have not power over her body, but the husband. And the husband don't have power over his body, but the wife. That's why you gotta show due benevolence to each other and loving each other. What is verse 5? Listen to this closely, read. Defraud ye not one the other. Don't defraud you one the other. Don't refuse because you're going to, you, so you, you refuse it because you got an attitude or you just want to say, oh, I, I know this will get him. Mm -hmm. I know this will get him, read. Except it be with consent for a time. Yeah, unless it be for what? Let, except it be with consent. With consent. You both agree that we're not going to have sexual intercourse. It's okay by the both of you, read. For a time. For a time, read. That ye may fun sorry. Yeah. That ye may give yourself to fasting and prayer. So now fasting and prayer, you may give yourself to fasting and prayer. So both of you consent to this. Whether it's one say I'm gonna fast and pray, and the other one says it's okay, go ahead. And you both consent. Whether you both fast and pray or not. If one said they're gonna fast and pray then let you know that if you fast and pray, you're not supposed to be doing what? Having sexual intercourse. Right. <laughs> you see, that's why I said, defraud ye not one the other except for fasting and pray. Be And come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your inconsistency. Contendency. Contendency. Yeah. You gotta come back together. And later, y'all remember that nourishes the marriage. Unless Satan come in and tempt you for your incontinency, not having sex with each other, not you know. Then here comes Satan through what? Through some man mm -hmm. coming at your woman. Mm -hmm. To a woman coming at your man. Here it comes. Because that's what Satan does. You get into the minds of people and he say, "Hey, go over there and do it." Mm -hmm. That's why I say, "Come back together." Once you finish fasting and prayer, come back together with love. Go ahead. But I speak this by permission and not of commandment. He said you're speaking this by permission. And he was filled with the Holy Spirit. He said he's speaking this by permission, not by not of commandment. It's just for your own good, right? For I would, I would that all men were even as I myself. But every man hath his proper gift of the Most High. One after this manner, and another after that. Well, he said he wished all men were like him, which he told us in the verse one again, what he said. Verse one. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Yeah, because he gave up that just for the, for the sake of the ministry. See, it's good for a man not to touch a, a woman, but he said in verse seven. For I would that all men were even as I myself, but every man had his proper gift of the Most High, one after this manner and another after that. Right. He wished every man was like him, but he didn't have a woman. He didn't touch a woman. But every man that has his proper gift of the Most High, one after this manner and another after that. Go ahead. I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. Right. You say he's talking to the married and the widows. It is good if they would abide even as he was, right? But if they cannot contain, let them marry. You can't contain yourself, marry. Don't think that it's okay going out there getting them toys and all that stuff, <laughs> see? <laughs> Just go on and marry a man. Right. Go on and get you a man. A man doing whatever they do, right. get you a woman. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For it is better to marry than to burn. It's better to marry than to burn. Go ahead. And unto the married I command, Yet not I, but the Most High. He's going to the commandment of the Most High, right? Let not the wife depart from her husband. But well, all the women divorce men all the time. Let, let not the wife depart from her husband. But, I mean, come on. 
I don't like you no more. You got on my nerve. You get on my nerve. I'm going to find somebody else. Somebody else already in my ear. Mm -hmm. Every time I go out, some 